Hey everyone, and welcome back to my channel, Girl Gone Crypto. I am so excited to have Jeannie here on the channel. Um, if you guys have been following me, you've been seeing um, me talk about them more recently with everything they're building in terms of decentralized machine learning. And so I'm really excited. We've got Zach Barnett here, the head of operations, just to dive in more detail to everything that they are building. So Zach, thanks so much for joining me today. It's awesome to be here. I'm excited to talk about it. I'm a big fan of the show. Well, just to kick off, let's get a high level overview of what Genie is, and then we'll kind of dive into some of the details from there. Definitely. Um, I think within uh, blockchain projects, first question everyone always has is why blockchain? Mm -hmm. um, I think machine learning is such a hot space right now that it can feel like a throwaway to say, oh, I'm just going to combine these two very buzzy tech words and right. you've got an interesting blockchain project where, in <laughs> fact, you know, we started this project because we saw a specific opportunity within machine learning that mm -hmm. only blockchain could deliver. Mm -hmm. um, I think if you look at the space right now, look at blockchain, um, there's a quote by Satya Novella, um, or uh, Norella, no, um, the <laughs> head of Microsoft, and he said, 2019, you know, every company is now a software company. Mm. And that's how every company should be thinking about, you know, their presence in, in the space. And, you know, if we look at like uh, 20th century, it's really about like data. And you look at 21st century, it's really about smart data. And there was a, a conundrum that we saw with machine learning that the biggest fish are gonna have this, you know, exponential advantage over the smaller fish. Mm. And there was an opportunity there to look to blockchain to solve some of these uh, democratization problems that are going to be inherent as people need to be smarter with their machine learning, but don't have the resources to build a team internally. Um, so using blockchain to deliver decentralized machine learning is the core of Genie's mission. Mm -hmm. And um, over the next couple of years, you're going to see us really hopefully changing the entire landscape of how people engage with their own data and collaborating with other people's data. Mm. So walk us through a, a little bit of how that works. And so we've gotten this kind of high level overview and then let's say that I am a company that you just mentioned, you know, this is something that more and more businesses are gonna need to really look into yeah. and figure out how to implement into their strategy. Um, what does that look like um, to actually work with you guys? Yeah, so a couple different options. Um, some some companies are definitely going to want a hands-on approach, um, a more of a bespoke product. Um, I know we talked about this just recently, but we're announcing uh, this week our first enterprise partner, um, the Swiss uh, grocery store chain N1, which is a partner of Intermarché, you know, nice. one of Europe's largest grocery stores. Mm. And they really had this idea that they wanted their customers to feel like their communication strategy and their promotional strategy felt like home. It felt like they were known without having this feeling that maybe their data was um, any way at risk or shared mm -hmm. outside of that system. Mm -hmm. So for a company like that, that wants to personalize their communication, their marketing, their operations, what we can do is come in and build a custom machine learning strategy for you mm -hmm. and um, integrate that with the blockchain so that we never have to touch your data. Mm -hmm. um, we can build a system where you maintain control of your data, you're not handing it over, and the system is able basically to interface with you and come up with smart recommendations and you know, more streamlined procedures, operations um, that doesn't involve you handing over your data. Um, for people that are more um, you know, developers, um, people who know how to actually code are comfortable within that space, Genie's also developing plug and play tools so that you can come in and actually custom create either, you know, applications uh, using Genie sidechains in the future or just access machine learning on chain, uh, which is a service that I think only we provide. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is just kind of like a funny side question, but I'm curious about the um, the naming convention, like why Genie? I'm always kind of curious to hear why people pick certain names for companies. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So. Genie um, started as a stri strictly machine learning focused company um, back in New York. And at the time it was spelled G-E-N-I-E. Mm -hmm. And it was really about, you know, unlocking value and understanding within data, which is what machine learning should do, right? Mm -hmm. Having a bunch of data on its own is kind of useless unless you know how to pull value out of it. Mm -hmm. So the idea of the Genie was really about 
you know, genie in a bottle, magic mm -hmm. wishes. Um, we're going to unlock this for you. And as we move to decentralize, you know, we wanted to keep that spirit, but mm -hmm. keep the branding and the kind of um, the brand identity more in line with the blockchain space. So like a lot of other, you know, very clever companies, we like pulled vowels out of things and we kind of, we shortened it. So GNY, <laughs> it's kind of Genie, uh, Genie IO is our website. Mm -hmm. um, and it really, it really stands for getting, you know, the value and the wishes out of your data. Oh, I love it. I, I figured there was a good story there. It's just too fun of a name for there not to be. Yeah. <laughs> so. <laughs> So one thing that I, I just, I, I almost want to go really high level again, just for those watching that are not as deeply integrated into the machine learning space, obviously, as, well, as you guys are. Um, what is the difference between decentralized machine learning and centralized machine learning? Definitely. Uh, it's a great question. So um, when you're thinking about decentralized versus centralized, I think it's easier to start with centralized because that's the model people know. Mm -hmm. So let's say um, I'm a mid-sized retailer, I want to use machine learning, I don't have access to a machine learning team uh, within my own staff, I'm going to contract out um, machine learning services from Google or someone mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. I'm going to hand over my data to them, they're going to consolidate it within a single location, and they're going to feed me back answers or insights. So, you know, much like data lakes, data pools, the centralized part talks about the data being locked in a central location, mm -hmm. and often it's a third party location. Um, so it, that centralization often isn't within your own team, right? Mm -hmm. You're often outsourcing some of that um, operation. So that, um, that model comes with a couple of inherent downsides. One, you're not in control of your data. Uh, two, it's centralized somewhere else, which may be more vulnerable to attack. And we've seen a lot of you know, um, very high profile um, compromised data situations with major yeah. companies the last couple, so, several years. Mm -hmm. And the last one is that you don't have the opportunity to really um, collaborate with that data. Mm -hmm. And so that's really the first connection that we had with the blockchain is people talking about um, smart contracts, automated, you know, data environments, where if conditions X and Y are met, then a contract will automatically execute. Well, those things need to have interactive and permissioned layers to them in order to be um, collaborative. And that can't happen within a data lake. Mm -hmm. um, you need to have a system that is permissioned, um, that has the potential for collaboration, that can partner with other data sets in a controlled way. Mm -hmm. And that's where the blockchain comes in. So our system, what we're talking about is the genie chain actually serving as an interface for your own data so that you can securely interact with the insights and the values that are coming out of your um, data through machine learning, but also able to collaborate with potentially other similar data sets or set up smart contracts so that, you know, key actions will um, in initiate other actions or, um, you know, potentially you could start to monetize some of the data that you know you see within your own data sets. We put out a, a use case this year where we more accurately predicted the um, electrical uh, output <laughs> and demand from California than the actual Department of Energy. Mm -hmm. So we did all that with public data, right? Mm -hmm. That wasn't proprietary data, that's, that's decentralized data. But there's a lot of value in that, right? If you're an energy company, you probably want to know that. If you're a machine learning entrepreneur, you want to use a system like this to sell your predictions. And that's really where the future of our, you know, landscape is going. We're going to be doing more and more within this decentralized data marketplace concept. I'm so glad you brought that up because um, I, I was going to ask you about that particular example. Uh, I saw that article you guys posted about being able to predict the kind of energy usage in California. And I think... Yeah especially that's a really big topic right now, thanks to Elon um, in the crypto space, really um, about just kind of energy consumption um, in the world of crypto. How um, how do you maybe see the technology you guys are building um, kind of folding into that conversation? Yeah, I mean, it's definitely, um, you know, apart from Elon, um, it's definitely been a big internal yeah. conversation for us uh, mm -hmm. this year, especially coming up to COP26. So for people who know, um, COP26 is the follow-up meeting to the, the Paris Agreement, 
where companies are going to come back to the table after five years and see where they are in terms of their commitments to climate change. And the news is they're they're nowhere near where they need to be. <laughs> um, you know, we were talking about a significant reduction by 2030 of, of global mm-hmm. carbon emission. We're one percent the way to that goal, where oh, we wow. need to be much further <laughs> along, and that takes into account the year of relative inactivity we had from COVID. So blockchain um, is not immune from, you know, the the self-referencing scrutiny that we need to be putting on our actions and their their impacts. And I think you can expect to see something more from us this year as it relates to carbon emission, as it relates to blockchain projects, um, because this is, this is going to be an important, um, you know, short-term buzzword, Mm -hmm. but long-term investment criteria um, moving forward. You know, the point Elon made about Bitcoin and mining and, you know, the sustainability, that's going to be more and more of an issue. I would not be shocked to see there's some kind of carbon tax on mining Mm -hmm. in the next 10 years, which would significantly affect economies and price. Mm -hmm. So that's some, that's a space we're very interested in. And I think you can, you can expect to see something from that. Uh, in that space from us this year. Mm-hmm. More so, use cases for sure. Oh, no, for sure. And that's a that's an even better segue just to talk about use case because it seems like there's so many potential, um, you know, utilizations of this technology you guys are building. Um, you know, you mentioned the grocery store example. You mentioned being able to kind of analyze uh, different data sets in terms of, you know, energy consumption. Do you have any other like examples of use cases where you potentially see um, uh, this technology being used? Definitely. I mean, I think it's worth just looking at um, our new uh, enterprise client, the N1 stores in Switzerland, because we're using the technology there in a couple of different ways. One, we're using it um, for customer facing communication, right? So you know, this person wants to be talked to twice a week, and these are the products that they love and they want promotions on. This person never wants to be talked to, <laughs> but if there's a sale on beer and they miss it, they're going to be dead, right? So ML is great for that. Personalized retail journeys, you know, actually engaging with customers how they want to be engaged is so important now, especially as, you know, everyone is just getting a blanket email. It feels mm-hmm. so noisy and annoying. Mm-hmm. That's It's going to only become noisier and more annoying, you know, this using ML to craft communication strategies is super important. Mm. Secondly, we're using ML to actually um, engage their rewards program. So you know, in what way can you power um, crypto driven rewards to actually influence positive consumer behavior, right? Mm. So um, what are people responding to? What do they like? What do they not like? What is actually a meaningful bonus for them? Mm. Um, And then lastly, we're using it to actually influence the supply chain and ordering structure so that their business can be more sustainable. As we were talking about carbon emissions, food production and consumption makes up about a quarter of all carbon emissions. And shockingly, like almost all that is from cows, it's not really, but there's a huge percentage. <laughs> but food waste and, you know, uh, lag time of refrigeration, all these things, uh, they add up to a significant percentage. So we're going to use machine learning to help them optimize their ordering strategies so they mm-hmm. don't waste food, so they don't have unnecessary emissions. So just within that one business, there's right. all these different applications, right? So when you asked before about centralized versus decentralized, this is the other key difference with us. Mm-hmm. Because we're not trying to lead, we're trying to build out, um, we're creating tools that we're gonna really encourage other people to use. Um, And we talked before about use cases. We do this a lot with our community where we'll turn to them and be like, here's this energy use case. What else do you guys want to see? And everyone's like, cats and dogs, like rainbows. Like people have all these (laughs) ideas about machine learning. Increasingly, they're going to want tools to do it themselves. Mm -hmm. And so we're going to build all these tools, you know, very highly sophisticated tools that are easy to use so they can start to actually run and create the landscape. So let's pivot and talk a little bit about the Genie token. So um, I've noticed you guys are on both um, ETH and BSC and some centralized exchanges like Bittrex. Can you kind of just walk us through a little bit of the the tokenomics, the role that it plays here in the Genie ecosystem and just kind of walk us through the token? Sure. I mean, uh, you know, we've been impressed to see that, you know, this ecosystem is evolving all the time. 
And we don't want to pigeonhole people into just one style of behavior or engagement. Um, we were excited to see the decentralized you know, exchanges take hold mm -hmm. and then become so popular. And I don't think anyone really expected you know, Uniswap to be as big as it was, right? right. It kind of came out of nowhere and was like, well, we're huge now, right? And then yeah. everyone's like, oh, crap, like we got to respond. So a lot of great um, energy and enthusiasm for our community there. But then you start to see super high gas fees. That becomes a little bit harder for people where they're like, oh, God, like some of this is becoming very expensive, especially if I'm just getting involved. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure, as you've seen, a lot of people are just getting involved. Right. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the BSC chain, so great because much lower fees, very easy to engage, but then how do you balance that? So our research team kind of took the task uh, to hand and developed this really brilliant swap gate. So we're able to move from our native utility token into these other environments. Mm -hmm. um, and right now we're on the verge of coming out with our BSC mainnet swap gate, mm -hmm. which will keep the overall circulating um, supply the exact same, the swaps are one to one, um, but allows people to move through these different environments and be flexible. Oh, that's awesome. Um, yeah. So I know we're kind of coming up on our time, but just to just to wrap up, I'd love to hear um, what's kind of coming next for the Genie team, what you guys are excited about. I know you just mentioned this big partnership coming out. Um, yeah. So it sounds like there's a lot of exciting things going on. But yeah, just kind of walk us through what people might be able to expect next. Yeah, so I think a lot of exciting stuff happening right now. Um, this year, we've just announced our first big enterprise partner. So it's great to be building something from the ground up with mm -hmm. a, you know, a huge brand behind it. You know, AD Marche, Intermarche had over $80 billion in sales last year. Them expanding into Switzerland, huge news. Mm -hmm. um, and great to have such a tech forward team that wants to use tech in the right way right. Um, to improve experience. So, so great to see that. And you'll see a lot of developments on that front. Um, from our brand side, you can expect to see a new Genie website in the next couple of weeks. And um, we're going to be giving away some swag and celebrating the enterprise announcement mm -hmm. with some beautiful hats and T-shirts, you know, uh, great posters that our web designers created. Um, and then I think you're going to see some really interesting stuff from uh, for us about this uh, Genie data place. So the last thing that I would touch on is um, I think probably going to be, you know, our, our main project going forward is creating an environment where people can monetize their data, they can collaborate with their data. Um, yes. People who are skilled machine learning engineers can come in and offer services through the platform, mm -hmm. really creating an open source network for people to collaborate and build, you know, these kind of trustless partnerships. And for us to facilitate building the tools and building the permission software needed, to do that securely uh, mm -hmm. using the blockchain. So we're, we're hoping, you know, people's Im imaginations really getting fired up here um, and they're excited to, you know, think about their own businesses and see, mm -hmm. you know, what can I do with machine learning? You know, what, where are the insights that I need to discover and for us to be the tools that they use to uncover those. Well, Zach, this has been such a fun conversation just to even get to learn a little bit more about machine learning itself and kind of how it works and some of the applications of how this technology might be used and then also more specifically what you guys are building at Genie. And mm -hmm. so if someone is watching this and they want to check you guys out um, and maybe learn more about you guys, where's the next best place for them to go? Um, people love our, our Telegram uh, community. Uh, it's very responsive. Our community managers are you know, endlessly patient and will answer all kinds <laughs> of questions. So that's great. Uh, we'll have a new website up, uh, gny.io, in the next couple of weeks. Our legacy site is still there. Um, our Twitter is always very active as well, gni.io. And uh, those are the best places to get involved. And there's always someone on, so we'll respond quickly. Perfect. Well, I will link to all of that below. So if those of you watching want to just hop in the description box, you'll be able to find those links right there. Um, so Zach, thank you again so much for taking the time to come on the show. And it's been a really fun conversation. <laughs> yeah, it's been great. Thanks so much for having us.